it's amazing how many times people go float fishing and one of the first things that they do when they get to the peg is clip on a plummet and have a good plumb round just to see what the contours of the peg's like and just get an idea of how deep it is. It's amazing how many people overlook that fact in feeder fishing. It's still a massive issue, so why not just transfer those skills from float fishing into your feeder fishing. I brought you along to Underbank Reservoir, which is not far from where I live in Sheffield, purely because this section of the reservoir here is an ideal example of how the contours of a peg can change just within the space of a few metres. As you can probably tell by looking over my shoulder, that is the dam wall. And traditionally, that has always been the deepest area of reservoirs like this. That's just a typical feature. But I just want to quickly demonstrate to you by using a stopwatch, clipping a bomb on, and just whacking it out into the reservoir, how it can highlight things that we quite often just take for granted. As you can see, I'm not far from the dam head. It's only just over here to my right, just a few pegs away. So you'd expect this area to be really, really deep. So what I'm going to do is, just on a nice comfortable cast with a 12 foot rod, I'm going to cast out to about, about 45 metres, get a quick reading of the depth with a stopwatch, and that way that will give me an idea of how deep or shallow it is out there. The way that I do it, I just get the bomb ready, ready to go out. I'm right handed, so I have the rod in my right hand, I've got the stopwatch ready in my left hand, and all I do is keep that in my left hand, when I, as the bomb hits the surface of the water, I switch the stopwatch on and then stop it again the second that it hits the bottom. Two seconds, that's a 40 gram bomb, that's got out about 45 metres. You'd expect it to be a lot, lot deeper than that, but already that's told me that it's really quite shallow out there. So what I'm going to do is just go two or three pegs to my left. The contours of the bank, the typography changes. It's a lot steeper behind. And usually when that happens on the bank behind the reservoir, that is generally reflected in what's happening underneath the water. So I've got a reading of two seconds here. I'm going to go three pegs to the left and let's see what count we've got there. I've just come up about three pegs up to the left now. The typography of the bank here is a lot steeper behind me. So let's see if that's reflected out there underneath the water. Twelve seconds. So in the space of three pegs, I've got an extra ten seconds of depth out there. These are the things that you can easily just overlook. And when you cast a bomb out or to start the session, it's just important just to get an idea of what it's actually out like there. If this was a peg that I'd drawn in a match, I could drop that bomb in different areas now just to build up a mental picture of what it's like out there. If you're ever gonna do this, which I strongly recommend you do, especially on these natural reservoirs, is that once you've found a range that you wanna fish, just by simply getting a bomb out there to where you're gonna fish, I can go to the sticks now, if I decided I want to fish where that's just landed, go to the sticks, clip up, I can also cast a bomb out and just drag the bomb along the bottom, just to make sure that it's nice and clean and that you're not dropping your, your initial bait right on top of a pile of rocks. 